Hi, my name is Scott. I'm from the Economics Tutoring Center, and today we're going to be talking about finding the minimum sample size given the acceptable margin of error. So please make sure to check my language and notation use with your professor because it may vary. Alright, so here we have an example problem, and it says, what is the required sample size to estimate the mean starting salary for new CPAs with 95% confidence? Assume a population standard deviation of 7,500 and suppose that the acceptable margin of error is 2,000. So, to start this problem, we can, we can write down some of the information we know. So, it um, tells us population standard deviation is 7,500. Um, it also tells us we have a 95% confidence here, so um, our alpha in constructing or in finding z-scores and such will be 0 0.05 because it's 1 minus 0.95 and then the question tells us that the acceptable margin of error is um, $2,000 so that tells us that our margin of error has to be less than or equal to 2000 so if you recall the formula for margin of error, that is equal to our critical z-score, and we can use z here because we know it's, we know the population standard deviation, so we use z rather than t, um, and then times standard error, which is population standard deviation over square root of n, and that has to be less than or equal to 2,000. So, what are we trying to solve for? Well, the question says, what is the required sample size? Um, and sample size is n in this formula. So we already have sigma. We have the population standard deviation. And we have 2,000 over here. So the only other thing we need to solve for n is this critical z-score. Um, and we know that alpha is 0 0.05 so if you look on a z table and just as you normally would to find a critical z score you'll find that or you can use an online calculator or something but you'll find that that critical z score is 1.96 and if this looks familiar it's because it's it's always the critical z score when you're dealing with 95 percent confidence um, for two tails. So now that we, ha we have everything we need to solve for n, so we can do that over here. So remember, we, we have that our margin of error has to be less than or equal to 2,000. And these numbers were 1.96 times 7,500. We still have over square root of n, because that's what we're solving for and that's less than or equal to 2,000. <clears throat> now we can multiply this n, or square root of n, over to the other side. We'll get 1.96 times, times 7,500 is less than or equal to 2,000 times the square root of n. Um, and then we can divide 2,000 over, and that gives us 1.96 times 7,500 divided by 2,000, and that's less than or equal to square root of n, um, and then we can just square both sides, so the square root of n just becomes n, and this becomes squared on the left, and then if you put that in your calculator, you'll end up with n is greater than or equal to 54.0225. And that tells you that for the margin of error to be less than or equal to 2,000, your sample size n has to be greater than or equal to 54.0225. But of course, your sample size can't include a decimal because um, you can't choose like you can't sample 
0 0.0225 of one person. Um, but we also don't want our sample size to be 54 because that's not greater than or equal to this number here. So whenever you're doing these calculations to find the minimum sample size, you always have to round up. So our answer is that to keep our margin of error less than or equal to 2,000, we're going to have to use a sample size of 55 or greater. And that's how, given the margin of error, the acceptable margin of error and population standard deviation, that's how you solve for the minimum sample size. Okay, so that's all we have today about acceptable margin of error. I hope it helped, and if you have any further questions, please feel free to come into the Economics Tutoring Center or ask your professor.